Our design thinkers, today we are going to be jumping into our design system. We're going to be building out our own clock using Figma's new variable feature. So if that interests you, then please sit back, relax, and let's jump into the video. All right, here we are inside of Figma. We are going to start building out our dynamic clock. What I have is a couple of cool components. We're going to take this step by step and start with just simply creating a little ticking timer to then ending up understanding how we can create that additional layer and then look at how we can make a 12 to 24 hour clock. So we're gonna need a bunch of information to start with. So let's like click out into our canvas. We have our local variables right at the top here and I have cleared out all my collections Basically, we can create a collection. And I've already created that, got that clock one, so I'll get rid of that. So in my clock collection, there's a couple of things that I need. I need to obviously have a second, so a second will tick. So let's create a number. Remember, a number will contain the value that we want. This type of number, is going to be our second number. I will also create another number. This one will be my minute. I will create another one. This will be my hour. Now, as we know, every 60 seconds, we have one minute. Every 60 minutes, we have an hour and we also have 12 to 24 hours which means every 12 to 24 hours we'll have basically a our whole day or half a day so what we can do is we are going to create one at least for the seconds and minutes and we need one more number this is going to be time length and basically this will allow us to easily manage the length of time. I would put 60 in here, but for testing purposes, let's just do two. So we have those. These are our buckets for the time that ticks over. And this is the value that we're gonna to use to measure this time to make sure that we're correctly incrementing the right values over time. Now we will be adding in a as well 12 to 24 hour clock or 24 hour 12 o'clock 12 yeah. So for the 12 we will make sure that we also have a string variable and this will be the actual am or pm and that will basically be what we'll have specified there and we're pretty good as you can see all i have is i've actually created two component sets here and what I can do is I'll check some, I'll check that color in the background, just grab that. What I can do is I'm going to recreate these ones. We're going to start with this first. So I'm just going to duplicate this asset out and make sure it's completely detached. It's nothing to do with this here. But I'll be able to at least show you how we're going to work it. The goal is to make this tick back and forth between these two points over time to increment that value in there. So if I was to click this and make sure that I will specify my seconds. Now my seconds are attached to this little clock piece here. I will grab and drag this out here. I will turn it into a component 
and I am going to call this my timer. I will take my timer, chuck it in there. Go to my prototype. In my prototype, I can select this. I can add this. I can call this a timer. Now I can press this little handy play icon and nothing's happening. 100% expect that, which is great. So now we have this little timer. All we need to do is actually click at the top here and I'm going to add a property. And this will just be a state. So what's it just doing? It's going to tick from one point to the other. And I'm going to drag it out. This will be the tick. So this will manage the tick. And this will be basically the event. What's going to take place is this will transition here on a delay of 909. 9 milliseconds, which is basically one millisecond less than one second. I'll make it transition straight away to event. I label this as event because this is where the event will take place, where we will increment the value. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to transition back on a delay of one millisecond. At this point when I'm transitioning back, I'm actually going to be doing some things. In this case, I'm just going to set a variable of seconds to seconds plus one. So at this point, Basically, I've almost a second and then I transition back because this will be classified as my event handler in this scenario. So if I was to play this again, now I actually have a ticking clock. So if this is all you want, then this is it. This is pretty much a ongoing, never ending ticking timer. These things are really handy to actually consider the way that we could control this and change between states. For example, if you are adding these, you could add this into other objects and add this into other, into other types of things that are not just time-based. You could create different events to transition in and then back to the main state. Anywho, we will now start to take this logic and actually apply this to it. So what I'm going to do is at the moment I've got this nice little ticking that's taking place. I'm going to combine them all together into one. So what I'll do is I'm just going to detach this from its parent and in here, I have my just my normal squares. They do technically have links, so I will just detach all of the links to clear it all. And now they're all empty and clear, ready to go. Let me right click, we'll turn this into a new component. I'm going to call this new time. So I'm going to call this, actually we'll just call it clock. Now we have my clock, I can add in a new variant. Very similar to how I was ticking over there, I'm going to do the same here. So this will be my event. And 
and this here will be my thick. And actually, sorry, take and this is the state handler. Thick. Really up to you how you name these things. I consider it as a state handler, and I'm considering it handling states and transitioning to different events. So this event that's taking place is that it's only transitioning back and forth between adding in this time. I will click on my top and all that I'll do is drag down and then I will set this to a delay. I'll make the delay the 99 seconds and now that I'm on here all that I need to do is simply transition back turn that into a delay turn that into a one and now I'm heading back I haven't added any of the logic in here and this is where we start to actually apply logic to our designed element and remember, if we were to open up here, go out of prototype, go to our local variables, we will see seconds, minutes, hours. These are the data points that we're holding in our time, our clock collection. And these data points are basically local to the file where you are here, but if you expose it, you could reuse those actual time-based variables and I am and you can also reference these too so if you were using a time you were using a clock and you did have the object this clock object in your design then you would have these variables ticking up over time you'll be able to reference them in the design as they are doing their thing and you can reference them from other elements within your design which is really cool So clicking up, I know we can reference those. Now let's set my logic. As you know, we've got the events firing back. So at the end, when the event basically ticks over to a whole second, so this is completed as one second, one millisecond delay, I am going to go and press this little plus button. I'm going to add a condition. And the first thing is I'm going to look at how many seconds so I want to say hey I've got if my seconds are in this case less than the length which is the amount of time that we specified there let's go the seconds are less than the length then what I will do is add second to second plus one so I'm adding one extra basically number two seconds so if it was zero it'll be one if it was one it would be two so on and now what i can do is add a point so if it is but if it has become greater than one i will do two things i'm going to set seconds to zero i am then going to come over to here where this says else I'm going to add another one or I will grab this and I'll set minutes to minutes plus one so I'm adding one more to minutes and now I have basically where I'm incrementing my minutes I can add another condition 
where I can now test for my minutes. Or I can say if my minutes are less than at the length. So if my minutes, like my seconds, are less than length, if it was 60, it would be 60 seconds, 60 minutes. And if that was true, then I'm good. I'm already technically up the top here in incrementing the seconds, so I'm um, into no, minutes. So I don't need to increment my minutes, but if the length was greater, which means it's equaled 60, or in this case two, then I will need to set minutes to zero. And I will do one more where, sorry, set minutes to zero, and I can actually here at the end, add one to my hours. So I can go set and I will go, yep, cool. I'm going to set and I set my hours to hours plus one. And now I can have my hours. And my final one will be my condition if hours is less than and we're going to basically create a 12 hour clock i will add 12 here i'll show you how we can also do a 12 and 24 hour lo logic swap but for the exact for this i'll just add 12 manually if we equal 12, oh sorry, if we're less than 12, we're good. If we are at any point greater than 12, I am going to have this set the hours to zero. So if I would grab this, let's actually we'll get this um, cut and I'll paste it in there. I can now press play. We will need to make sure. Oh, yep, my bad. I also do need to do the connection to the time. So let's click on both those numbers. We will specify the hours, specify minutes, and we can do the second. There we go. So my seconds start ticking up. You remember we did two, so two will be the capping point. So they'll just continue to increment as so, as they go on and on. At the moment, this is at 12. So we'll have to wait for a little bit to get to that point, but I'm gonna quickly skip it. What I know is that it is working the way they intend it. I can double check the actual 12 by simply opening this up and chucking in, let's say to manually and we do press play. So we got one, two, ticks it over and it's one, two, ticks it over and then one, 
and there we go and we reset back to the start so now we actually have a timer this clock basically will continue to tick on for as long as we like if you would like to make sure that this time is back to the 60 minutes 60 seconds so on all you need to do is open up your piece here inside local variables you'll set that to 60 and that's basically it for that part of the clock so how do we do let's say a 12 hour to 24 hour clock what we'll do is we're actually going to have a handler that will handle the actual am or pm and if it is a 12 hour or 24 hour We'll create another collection and I am going to say what right and inside this collection we are going to need to have a string and we will have two strings so this will be am this will be PM and I'll write it out there. These are just words or the acronyms that we'll be using and the actual final one I will also have the Actually, we might segment this out. So I'm going to keep this as just AM or PM. And this is going to be basically my set data. So clock, so it's a clock. So this is just static information as a collection. And then I'll add another collection. This will also be static information, just going to contain two, two values. This will be 12 or 24 hour clock. And I will edit that name just to use some numbers instead. And I will add in two numbers, which will be the 12 hour, which is 12, and the 24 hour, which will be 24. Pretty self explanatory. Now that I have 12 and 24. All that I need to do is access that those values and switch them according to a particular choice. And what I can either have that as a static or I could end up having it as really whatever I'd like actually. I have my at the moment I got this text thing is just AM or PM, that's my string. And what I can do is if I right click on this, I can go create an align and I can grab the value from the block AM or PM, which will be that one. And I can go to that text block and I can assign the singular our PM from my clock, which is just this. Actually, you know what I'll do is I might adjust this. Nope, no, that's fine. So there's my AM and all that I want to do here is make sure that I switch this. We'll start with the 12, 12 and I'm going to make sure that I switch from AM to PM when our hours ticks back over to zero 
again. So to do all that I'll need to do is when I'm jumping back and forth here and I come down to the bottom, you'll notice that I had this. So as long as I'm less, I'm good. But if I'm more, I'm going to set it to this. I just need to go else. And really all I need to do is determine if I am AM or PM. So I actually may need. So I'll go here. And what I'd like to do is Instead of actually, I guess, finishing and removing this off here, I might actually change my logic. And if I equal the time, so what I will do is add another variable, which will be a number, and this will be the well or 24 and in here I'm going to actually assign one of those values that I did have in my my hour clock. to add both of these as numbers. There we go. There we go. So that's why we need to make sure we actually use the right actual variable containers. 12, 24 hours, there we go, done. This will be the 12, obviously uh, carries the number across as 12. So I can actually reference the singular time and that could switch. So as I come down here, and instead of me simply referencing and saying, hey, what about this time? I can actually say, are you equal to? And if you're equal to whatever the user specified, either 12 or 24 hours, then uh, you know that you've reached the maximum. So if I know that I've reached the maximum, then I know that I need to take the hours, I need to set the hours to zero. And in this scenario, I also will need to actually set my AM or PM to a different text, which there's a few ways that we can do this. And I will have a quick 
by we'll find out very quickly which way exactly probably will so we've got my ampm value that's my text and i will set this to yeah i will need to set it this way all right so the way that we're going to have to set up the am or pm switch is going to be i'm going to grab my text block here and what i need to do is actually say this will be am and pm i will create this as a component and I need to create it having a variant. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a text reference to the different states of this variant. This will, of course, be my AM. And this will be my PM. And these will be my... So it's going to reference the AM or PM based on the state. So I can go drag out a component. And as you can see, I have my clock, I have my AM or PM, and I can see that I can assign it this because the text of it can be AM or PM, like it's literally that string and it works perfectly. Now this is just switching it. There needs to be a point where we've referenced the switch. And that is the next step. Because as we could see, I could only set a variable. I can't double check an if at the moment inside of Figma. So what I'll need to do is actually tell it that it needs to update uh, the AM or PM. So what I'm going to do is I will set a number. It could be a number. It could be really anything. I mean, it might actually. But let's use a boolean. And I'm going to use a boolean and I'll call this update. Update block. So it'll be false. And when it update, so what I'm going to do is I'll set update clock on in this scenario when I need to change it. You'll see very shortly how that works. So as we are transitioning back, we're doing all this logic. We've just compared 12, 24 hour. We set this to zero. We're about to set this state. Probably not going to set the state there, which is fine. The last one will be another if where what's going to take place is I haven't set this value yet. So I've set this to zero. Let's go into here, set the update clock to true, which is going to tell basically the next if statement, this one, that it needs to trigger. So I will go down, I'm going to find the update state. I say, hey, is this equal to true? And if it is equal to true, I will definitely start by making sure this is equal to false, just to make sure that we don't end up always triggering it. And I'm now going to up. I'm also. So if it's true and I need to add another bit. So if this is true and 
it is equal to and if and if this is equal to am so if this is true and it is also equal to am so it will have to be am then it will go to pm as long as this is turned on then it's going to turn it off and it is going to set it here to the pm Sorry, no, it's no, it's gonna, no, it's going to set my, it's gonna set AM or PM, that's in the clock, this part in the clock, to the designated one, which is the set variable. Like, so clock one set, sets to PM. Now, we, do have the last part of the logic which is the else but I'm not going to fulfill the else here because I cannot do a condition on the else to make sure that it meets the alternative condition so in this scenario we're going to have to do this again unfortunately uh, we're going to have to go to condition we will need to do the same condition but in the other way when it comes to PM. So first of all, I'm going to make sure that update is on. So if update is on, then, so yeah, update equals true. And if AM or PM equal, da, 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 yeah equals PM then we will set this to false so we're getting it taking it all the way back to nothing And lastly, we will grab the set. We're going to set the clock AM PM to the AM. Like so. I'll double check my other condition, make sure that both conditions are right. Update clock. If update clock is true, yes. And we have AM or PM and the AM or PM equals PM. Then we do the next part of the condition, which if it equals PM, then we set the update clock to false. Yep. And then we set AM PM to AM, which is a yes. So that's correct. We will double check this one. <laughs> if update clock equals true and am pm equals am that's good that's true then we will set update clock to false and we are going to set the am pm to pm and now we have an alternate where it will alternate between the two ideally so for us to test this out and see if it works fingers crossed the at the moment that's why we're doing these values by the way what we can do is I can go to my 12 to 24 and I can change that to a 2 and I can actually test this it will tick up it will hit it will keep ticking actually we will go to our clock. We're going to change that to two as well. And it will tick up one, two, hits two, one, two, hits another. And then 
There we go. Now it's PM. And it will tick over. Eventually, hopefully, it will tick to 2 again. And now we're back to AM. So there we go. Now we have a way for us to have your uh, 12 to 24 hour clock. We've got the 12 hour. At the moment, we're switching that value. And really, all you need to do to basically tick this all the way would be for you to add a button that would allow the user to simply adjust this variable. I'll probably leave that one out and give you the challenge to see if you can accomplish that. And uh, if you need a hand, please leave a comment in the description box below. I'm more than happy to help. But until next time, design thinkers, I hope this video has been helpful. Please keep thinking, keep designing, and keep building amazing things. See you in the next video.